Hi, y'all. It's Bridget Cutshaw with Real Things to Living. Today, my guest is Perry Gabbard. Hopefully, I said that correctly. And he is the author of a book coming out soon called Stepping Out on an Adventure of Faith. He is here to share his story and his beautiful story. And actually, we're going to talk like we're walking down the trail together. Right, Perry? Can you say hi? Hi. Well, I just uh, I want to say how much I appreciate uh, Bridget and the podcast, um, but more importantly, uh, who you are and the way that you have uh, helped so many people through this whole theme of resilience and really looking at what means most in life. And, uh, you know, hearing your story and the people you have on your podcast has really been a, an encouragement to me personally. So thank you. Oh, that's beautiful. I really appreciate that. Uh, Perry and I met through a uh, uh mutual friend, Kent Sanders, and that's kind of how we connected. And we're kind of in a group to, uh, we're helping each other in a way because we're writers and trying to get our books out there. And Perry's story is absolutely amazing, guys. And this book, Stepping Out on an Adventure of Faith, he's, you know, looking at nature and trying to heal himself. And how many years ago did you actually do this this is unbelievable he walked the pct yeah because you can explain that. that's amazing what you did sure just to give you a quick background when i was in college as a freshman uh, i grew up in california and dearly loved backpacking and uh it was kind of the first boom of the backpacking era i think in the <laughs> 60s and 70s and uh my roommate and i were uh, you know headed off to a store found a brochure about this thing newly completed Pacific Crest Trail. So it runs from Mexico to Canada, 2,650 miles. And of course, in our exuberance, uh, getting back to our dorm, looking at a map and photos, uh, you know, no internet then. We, we were just pumped up and excited and thinking, you know, we could do this. We've got all summer. But uh, the reality of, of uh, you know, paying the bills and working so I could go to school, uh, that, that sets in and life happens. And uh, it's sat on the shelf uh, or in a manila folder in my my cabinet for 40 years. And uh, when I was able to retire early, I headed out uh, to begin this trek. And uh, it was quite a uh, an epic journey. I did a lot of preparation and, and uh, but it really, there are things that were going on in my life as a professional. I had really achieved, um, you know, the height of all my professional goals. And uh, uh, I also, because of the stress involved, uh, there were themes of me using alcohol to uh, sedate my uh, stress level and always doing that quietly. And so uh, part of the healing was entering a program of recovery through AA, but also um, this trip and spending time, uh, you know, a lot of time alone uh, with God, but also with other people. And it made a huge difference. Uh, lots of lessons learned along the way. And I share that in the book, uh, hoping that through understanding, uh, you know, my own disillusionment, discouragement, the challenges, the highs and lows, uh, the dangers, <laughs> uh, all of the things that came with this trip, um, somehow hoping that that will help other people overcome self-doubt, fear uh, to achieve their dreams. And that's really the hope in writing the book. Right. It's it's a, it's amazing that, number one, that you did this by yourself. <laughs> And but you had put put it on the shelf and you you brought it back back down again. You dusted it off. Is that the right <laughs> the idea? And you made the plan. I think that is really important that you have to have a plan. Some people just try to wing things, and then that you're going to be more likely to finish it if you have. I mean, it's not going to be perfect plan, but you have to to lay it out. And I think it's amazing. My understanding is it was 4,800 miles. That is, well, yeah. Well, that that figure is talking about, I said, I was trying to lay that out, uh, talking about through my life. Oh, experience. I got gotcha. you. All right. I, was, I, I thought so I was like, other, holy cow. <laughs> there's other trips involved with that big mile you know, that was supposed to impress people with, wow, you know, you really walked that far. But uh, that's a lot. <laughs> that involves the Colorado Trail, uh, a lot of uh, family trips uh, and other ventures in Grand Canyon, uh, you know, all through the Smoky Mountains and a lot of other places. So, yeah, it's I love mountains, too, or hiking. At, and mm. I've met people who prefer the beach and I actually prefer looking at the mountains or some. It's, <laughs> I guess because you're looking up. 
Maybe that's yeah. what it is. Yeah. And once you get there, uh, uh-huh. it's really a, a just an inspirational perspective. Yeah, it is. It's very inspiring. And, and you just, it's just calming. I mean, even though it's hard work, it still calms you down a little bit. At least for me, mm. it did. And I'm just curious that I'm sure, I know you're working and raising kids and all that. I'm, did you squeeze in hiking with your children at all, I'm assuming? Yes, we had three boys. So a big a big uh, factor that attracted me to my wife was, you know, she's a beautiful lady uh, inside and out, but also uh, she was an avid hiker and backpacker. And uh, I thought that sealed the deal right there because it's uh, <laughs> yeah. not a lot of ladies when they understand what's involved with uh, heading out into the woods for a week at a time are, are that willing to want to participate. So uh, anyway, we we had a lot of trips uh, together as a couple. And uh, and then our boys were just raised. Uh, probably half of our vacations were going to places like the Wind River Range in Wyoming, <clears throat> doing the uh, you know Yosemite and Sequoia and the uh, national parks were big on our list. That's beautiful. Kings Canyon. So I'm you know we had that both as a priority, and our boys just grew up not knowing any different. <laughs> That's I think it's it's good that you prioritize that ex- those experiences with them rather than buying them stuff. That's just my perspective. <laughs> right. I, I always shared that, uh, you know, our boys never made it to Disney World, but uh, but we made it to a lot of other awesome places. And, oh, uh, yeah. And so they, you know, they continue today. One of one of my sons, especially, is uh, more adventurous than even I. And he's the one that's always uh, calling up and saying, Dad, let's go here. And uh, <laughs> of course, you have to say yes. You know, you can't you can't turn that opportunity down. Right. right. So so it's been a joy to share that, uh, you know, it's been a lifelong passion. It wasn't something I woke up and just decided to do. Right. Uh, it was a dream for a long time. And so you kind of wonder, do I still have what it takes? Uh, one of my jokes in, in discussing that, I was out with a friend walking a trail and I was describing my old Toyota vehicle. And I said, you know, the engine's still strong, but it, the chassis's got a few squeaks in it. And I said, <laughs> if there's anything that described this journey and, and my own efforts it was really that idea that yeah some of the joints and tendons and other things you know they squeak a little every now and then but uh the heart's still strong you know the engine's that's still going. good that's the important thing is the engine right it gets you you right. can always you can always tweak and adjust along the way yeah um yeah one thing i when i did I, I got to read his book guys you mentioned or you met a lot of people along the way uh people that you didn't know beforehand you had so much i guess in common i know right it, you had like yeah four themes that the, you can connect on yeah you know that it was such a rich experience in that way and i don't think i anticipated all of that even though i said i went out alone uh, after the first 340 miles or so i began to sync up with different groups at different times uh and uh, began to have some time together and it was interesting because uh, it's challenging in terms of, uh, you know, some of the triggers for alcoholism. Uh, th- we use halt. Am I hungry? Am I angry? Am I lonely? Am I tired? Well, at least three of those. I was never angry on the trail, but I was hungry. I was lonely and I was really tired a lot, averaging 20 mile days. But finding the group that you could uh, sync up with, it was interesting as we can, you know, shared our lives. Uh, people use trail names. Uh, That's the first question when you greet somebody is, what's your trail name? And I think one of the aspects of having a trail name, mine is Perigee, which I can explain later. (laughs) The uh, I think there's a sense of anonymity there that you you don't know who you're who you are and you don't necessarily have to reveal where you're from. So in the midst of that, I think uh, it was amazing to find there were several times that uh, we had instances of meeting other people that were actually in a program of recovery. Uh, finding other people that may have similar, uh, you know, faith or beliefs or not. And uh, and just it's very enriching. You, you, uh, I love the quote from Eat, Pray, Love about the, the, the physics of the quest. Uh, you learn a lot um, through the people you meet and you learn a lot about yourself. Some of the things that you need to leave behind. Right. It's too heavy to carry on this on this journey. Right. And, and what it is, you're you're just making these beautiful connections that you probably didn't realize you needed. And, and that's a, it's a support on a trail that people you didn't know. And I, I think that's beautiful. I think that's what life is about meeting um, new people 
I just, I like, that's just me. I like to people, I like the idea of the trail name too. You don't need to know my real name when I'm out there. So right. where did you get your, what did you say? Paraguay? What did you say yours was? Well, it's a, it's perigee. Perigee, sorry. And, uh, <laughs> it, it actually was a derivative of, uh, um, I've done a lot of orienteering and also studying of, you know, nature. And so, uh, the lunar orbit as the moon goes around the earth or as a satellite goes around the earth, uh, when it's at its closest, or when it's at its farthest, it's at its apogee. And when it's at its nearest point, it's at perigee. So okay. perigee became perigee. And I realized as I was even naming my blog that I, I began, I, my first blog was apogee to perigee. And it really was about myself coming back to a closer walk with the God that I know and love having let a lot of things get in the way. And so for me, after drifting away, I was drawing near. And so I shared that, I began to open up and share my stories when people ask you your trail name, because most people don't know what's perigee. Right. Typically trail names are given by other people when you're traveling with a group. You know, they'll, if you are somebody who hits your, hits your head on the ceiling in the bunk house of the hostel, uh, they'll call you a headbanger. Uh, you know, <laughs> I had a gentleman who, uh, who, fell several times and uh, he got the name timber uh, because oh, he was funny. like a tree falling on the on the trail so people usually in some derogatory funny way will assign a name but uh, i kind of assi self-assigned mine uh, before i went i didn't know you were a blogger i didn't know that that's kind of cool so what prompted you to blog was it before or after the the uh, you know, healing process yeah, I was unsure at the time I was getting ready to retire. And the group of people that I worked with uh, were all very adventurous people. In fact, the statement after a weekend would be, and what adventurous thing did you do this weekend? So it was kind of like trying to outdo each other uh, between mountain biking, climbing, uh, hiking <laughs> or whatever. So anyway, uh, they were all very interested in, in keeping up with how do how are we going to keep up with you and what you're doing? So I I think my first post was, you know, I'm not sure about this blogging thing, but uh, here we go. And uh, I, I began to share that. And uh, through posting on the Pacific Crest Trail Association website as a trail blog, uh, people love to follow you vicariously. And so there were many posts along the way. And uh, and really a lot of that uh, rich uh, writing and thinking and, and the people and the situation along the way uh, that people loved became an important part of this book. Uh, a lot of the content, probably at least half of it, uh, began with the, some of those, uh, you know, blogging entries, as well as expanding the stories. Uh, my wife is a great resource. She said, you were always telling me about this. Why isn't this in the book? I was like, oh, oh. you know, I uh, was able to expand and enrich it. To, um, re and it really was a joy to relive that as I'm literally writing these things, uh, looking at pictures remembering those circumstances it was uh it was been a rich experience so i hope my hope and dream is that as people read it they'll experience some of that and not be inspired to take a through hike but inspired to pursue their own personal dreams right. don't let well, pull that dream out of the old vanilla folder uh dust it, it off it definitely brought back memories for me because i think i i told you I, my father in the 70s took us out west to mm go hike and we we have mountains here in, in Georgia but out west would seem to be a little steeper and harder I was gonna be a forest range when I was a young girl but I don't know what I was always intrigued with that but then in growing up in that time frame being a girl you, you know you you're told it's not possible it's not safe mm -hmm. and stuff I'm pretty sure there's a lot of female um Oh, yeah. I don't know why I was so obsessed with that, but I mean, that's what you have lots of good ideas when you're uh, young, <laughs> but I've come back to that in a way as an adult, my husband and I, we have property that's not too, it's on, um, what do you call it? The uh, Corps of Engineer property, which is by some lakes, right? Oh, so wonderful. They can't develop behind us. So that was uh, something that we have in, in common I, and and it probably I didn't think about it uh as a child you know but that's what I'm saying with your children it's so great the memories you created with them and it just brought back memories I had with my dad isn't that and great he's why I'm a runner Bob. <laughs> oh wow 
Correct. I don't run marathons. He's done the, you know, I've, um, you got to listen to your body too. But just like you said, you want to inspire people to, to go after what they want to do. And the hiking analogies are just so beautiful. And it will bring back un, just memories people aren't expecting. And I think that's what it is, it is to reflect. And you're, to me, it's a good way to, to, to pause, people to remind people to pause and just engage with their environment and other people. <laughs> I love it. You know, I, I tried to express that in terms of uh, there was one particular time I thought I like to use acrostics or think of some nifty way to remember things, but uh, I call them the D's, but it was a matter of trying to, uh, you know, declutter your life. When you head out backpacking or day hiking, you can only carry, you know, you only bring what you can carry on your back. And so it has to be somewhat light and simple. So, so for a brief period of time or for a lengthy period of time, um, you've jettisoned a lot of the clutter of your life. Oh, love In fact, it. I try to encourage people, you know, you could keep your phone on to use it. For instance, I would use it for uh, talking to text, using Word to blog, but keep keep the, uh, you know, keep it in air, airplane mode so that you're not getting all the alerts and calls and other things. You'll be fine. But that way it's quiet. <laughs> yeah. So you declutter your life from the things in your mind, uh, the things that you look around your house and you think, oh, I need to do all these many things. And then you de-stress, right? You, uh, you you distress yourself from all of the, as you're, to me, I love that you're engaging body and mind and spirit in this experience, walking down a trail or walking in a park. You know, it doesn't have to be extreme. So de declutter and de-stress. And then also I said, <laughs> it happened to be in the midst of a lot of, you know, uh, things coming across the news airwaves. I said that uh, debunk. Yeah, let me just yes. debunk all of the stuff and leave behind the world of social media and news. And for a, for a period of time, disengage. Uh, I love that story. I, I, I share it. I got a hold of my wife. It's hard when you're in the mountains. You get a mountain pass, you get a reception, and suddenly you say, oh, hey, you know, how are you? <laughs> and she, it was funny because she said, did you hear about the vote? And, uh, you know, at that particular time, it had to do with, I think, Brexit or something. And I just remember I, I looked to the left, I looked to the right, and I said, you know, nothing's changed out here. I said, things are just going on pretty much like they always have. And uh, and and there's that realization that there's this parallel universe out there, and it doesn't bother us to debunk ourselves from that. So declutter, de-stress, debunk, and just, just get out and spend some time and reflect, like I'm sure you've done, journaling. Oh, yeah, journaling and... It was my sons actually that um, convinced me to start blogging. Right? People don't. Wow. Because they were, I don't know how sure old they were at the time. It was after the brain tumor diagnosis. Because they they knew that I liked to write, but I did it for some reason. I mm. there's kind of you hold back on yourself because yeah. I was always a perfectionist, and so I didn't. Mm -hmm. That that was my thing. It has to be perfect, right? Yeah. And I don't know why. Right. Same thing, right? Yeah. It must be common. And so I put it out there and people liked it. And I was just sharing stuff and I only was encouraged by my sons. You know, I don't know if anyone else that would have encouraged me, but it was uh sharing your stories is 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 hard sometimes outside of your close group, right? But we learn so much from each other. And I love your right. you know. Your, your your background is beautiful. Well, whenever I'm with others, I think if there's a level of honesty and you just crack the door open a little bit safely when it's safe to be vulnerable, um, I'm always amazed at how um, I always find there's a reason, you know, people are waiting. It's, it's kind of like poker. You ante up and and ever, and then suddenly people are willing themselves to uh, to open up and share, especially guys. Um, right. When I'm with other guys and I seem to be somebody that maybe I have a knack for that is just uh, I, I'm beyond worrying about what other people think. Uh, you know, when I was in my profession, <laughs> when I was worried about things like a security clearance or whatever, right. uh, I have to I, I can't let anybody know what's really going on. Right. Or, or I have this image as a program manager. I have to portray this. Uh, you know, I got it together. image, And so it's so nice to be free from that. And uh, so I'm in my eight and a half year fast retirement date. And I 
it's just rich. I think to be able to just be yourself, not have to worry about wearing a mask. And uh, and there's there's a sense of uh, relief in that, isn't there? Yes, right. And I'm self-employed, so there's a sense of relief. But uh, it's I was just thinking what more you're talking about, about all that. Do you think this culture, I should say culture stuff, people want to not go into offices now? And that was just, mm. they're probably speaking up. And and I've been doing, when I was an employee, I worked remotely for over decades as soon as the internet came out. But I had to travel for work. But mm. I, I, and I had raising, raising my sons at the time. And I liked the, um, free, I felt freedom, not having to commute <laughs> somewhere. Yeah. And, but then I had to travel sometimes, but I was very fortunate to have managers or I don't even want to call them bosses, but they knew I was getting stuff done. Right. So mm-hmm. it, a lot has to do with how leadership as well involved mm-hmm. in all this. I'm just kind of go off on a tangent here, but it's true. What you say, you felt so much freedom when you're not feeling you had to had a different face on at work (laughs) and and i think you know you've expressed that as probably our own self-imposed uh i think i think people are willing to bear with us in all of our weaknesses or strengths yes Uh, but uh most of the time we ourselves are trying to to hide and cover up uh anything that might appear weak and and you said perfectionist that you know was that First born and and uh, for twelve years was an only child and so there's a lot of uh, you know you grow up being a being a young adult you know you you're expected to behave certain ways and to, to act certain ways so there's a lot of that ingrained in you it makes for great loyal yes. employees who will work themselves to death trying to please other yes. people and yes. uh, and that's very successful but then eventually you figure that game out and think wow you know it'll affect your health that's how I look at it too it I could it did. Yes, they can't. Right. It affected your health and you wanted to deal yeah. with it. Like you said, the alcohol to help you um, deal with those emo- or what you're, you know, I shouldn't say emotions, but I'm sure you're trying to suppress emotions. Yeah. Well, I took counseling and and uh, yeah. and I have to say, you know, I believe in a, a spiritual power. You know, uh, my God has really been the power that helps me to overcome that. And perhaps the greatest thing I can do is to actually admit my own personal weakness and say, right. you know, I am powerless <laughs> and that's got to be where I start from uh, before I can ever begin that process of, uh, well, of healing. It sounds like you learned that you couldn't, you had, you couldn't do this by yourself. You did subcon- mm-hmm. you know, you, you got help from nature and then uh, people you met and God, right. And that yeah. helped you and your family, obviously your family too. And, and the family and also trained counselors. I right. uh, you know, went through right. several out of workshop and, uh, and personal counseling and, uh, I always laugh. I think, my goodness, it took till I was in my mid 60s before I'm beginning to understand and untangle some things and feel f- freed. So, it, you know, I look at other people and think, you know, you're in the midst of life as crazy as it is when you're a young parent or if you remember how hectic life was. Uh, it just takes us all a while. And, and perhaps the best thing we can encourage people is just to be patient with yourself in the midst of that and don't don't give up. Don't become disillusioned and discouraged. I think that's my primary message in the in the story because actually as I headed out, I thought I was going to complete this whole trail in five and a half months in one summer. That was the goal in order to be successful. A very linear thinking. But by the time I was done, I uh, injured a tendon and uh, I was 1,076 miles into the trip. Had to come off the trail. Very discouraged. Uh, you know, I thought, oh no, I failed, right? I failed to accomplish what I went out for. But by going back in successive trips and doing large sections that remained, and it took me four summers to do that, uh, it actually was a gift. You know, that was a gift to not finish it all and be done. Each time I went back, it was an iterative process. And so I share within the book, I said it was it's a holistic exercise, body, mind and spirit. Yes, Um, it was iterative. I was going back again. And each time I learned something new. I was happier being alone in the later years uh, because of the, the way that works out when you jump in to a, a through hike uh, late in the game, you're, you're, you've not with the group anymore. And also uh, the fact that it's kind of what I envision as a spiral, that linear thinking of I've got to make it from south to north. Uh, you remember the phrase I said, I've gone three steps forward and two steps back. 
right. there's that sense that I'm right back. I'm, I've made no progress. I'm right back where I started. But in fact, if we think about it as an upward moving spiral, uh, as we iterate, and as I experienced in recovery, uh, relapse, as I help other people in their struggles and they relapse, you know, it's like, wow, you know, we are further along than we were before. You haven't gone back to where you were before. You've learned something this time that you didn't before. And so little by little, as we progress on this upward spiral, uh, I think that's it's pretty key to, for me to understand life and be accepting that and not feel like a failure. So the trail taught me that, you know, the wisdom of God as I'm doing that. And, uh, and that's what I've tried to share a little is that framework and that model within this story that might give someone else some hope in the midst of their uh, discouragement. Definitely. And I like how you taking small steps is more important. You got to make it in, in the long term if you're not trying to rush it. And, yeah. and you mentioned too, you got to listen to your body. I mean, you can imagine if you would not, if you ignored the, uh, the injury, the it would be, you would not have been able to go back possibly if you made it worse. Yeah, yeah. no, you're right. That's a, that's a really good point. I love your story as a runner. I've, I've run, you know, during my <laughs> lifetime. And I think a lot of those lessons of running you know, are, are the same as hiking, right? And you yes, think yes. you can't, when you think you can't make it any farther, sometimes you can go a little farther. And right. How you train to, to prepare, going <laughs> yes, a little at a time. It. Yeah. It's, in, it's something that I think being a, I was a military brat. I mean, I always took, you know, um, father was in the military so mm-hmm. you saw I saw a lot of that kind of movement on, so and I'm middle child but my older sibling and the bro is my brother so in a way I was always running trying to keep up with him I was a little bit more wilder than him I don't know if that's the right word <laughs> wild's the wrong word but I was more um outspoken and I think maybe that's why I became a perfectionist because I was told to stop <laughs> doing that but I was, I didn't, I don't know. I was just thinking all these, just talking to you is making me bring back all these memories. Right. Mm. And yeah, but they liked my honesty, you know, you know, I'm honest and nice about it. That's what I learned from the, that yeah. stuff. Yeah. I think it's important to give people feedback, especially sure. um, you can feel, you know, the intuition kind of thing too. Yeah. There's power in story. Yes, I, exactly. you know, as we as we encourage each other in writing, you know, we talked. I talked to other people. I said, "You have an important story to tell. Yeah. Consider writing, even if it's not for some big publication. It helps you uh, when we assign words to our thoughts and try to grasp, you know, quite a, try to put a handle on it and describe it. Uh, I think it helps us, uh, and it helps other people, just like you have in your, you know, your podcast and your writing. That's a mm-hmm. That's a key that opens the door uh, for a lot of people. And so you just never know. I love the fact that through the Internet or social media or through publication of your book, you and your story have been amplified, multiplied in a way that uh, you'll never know this side of heaven. What (laughs) how many people you've encouraged? Yeah, the goal is to help. My goal is just to help one person, you know, that just and that's a ripple effect. Is that the right word? Um, Yeah. I say that right or domino effect and which one is the proper term but that's I, really what it is i love that statement because there's times when i thought i've gone for the big score you know being competitive in business and other things and realize you know if there is one person you know if this will help one person then it's worth it it's, it's yes. and so because that's it like you said it, it from there it ripples that one person may be the person who uh, now is enabled to uh, you know do even more amazing things than than Bridget has. So, right. And yeah. another thing that you mentioned, sorry, I, I'm just blabbing here, but no. I think out in nature and hiking, it uh, produces your ego a little bit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I just, that just popped into my head. Yeah. It's very, no, I, it brings you down to like, yeah, you are, you're just a human <laughs> trying to, yeah. Like, yeah. I should say, but some people have these big egos and I think that's what happens. And, big businesses. That's just my personal experience. And yeah. I think I wanted to be, you know, uh, keep up with everybody. I was very competitive. Trust me. Oh, very yeah. competitive, extremely yeah. competitive. But then I'm like, well, that's not good long-term, right? To keep it, up at that pace. 
it isn't, but, and that's a hard thing that we finally learned for me. Uh, I said, I needed a tattoo on one of my inner fingers where only I would see it. But I thought, I-N-A-Y, it's not about you. You know, yes. uh, it, I have to remind myself over, over again, even as we become published authors, as successful podcast hosts, um, it's it's okay. It's not always about you. This is for Correct. other people. And uh, and so it's that's a hard, <laughs> it's, a, it's a battle. I think, you, like you said, our ego, uh, we use that term in recovery talk about edging got out uh, yes. there's you know when i do that it, it doesn't take me too long before uh boom i trip and then i'm uh, wondering what has happened right <laughs> right oh yeah it's just it's just funny how life just uh you got to experience it and learn from it and i i like to um, put in humor you know like i use so much humor going through other cancer treatments because that helped me i needed that humor yeah. And the doctors, it helped them too. Can you imagine? I mean, I just think about how what tough their jobs are and the nurses. And yeah. that's just kind of how I like, wow, these people are, I just want to be nice to them and not be mad, you know, and make jokes. And yeah. that's just something I've naturally innate. I, that comes out of me for some reason. Mm. I don't know why, where that came from, but. um. Oh, it's healthy. It, huh? It's healthy. It is. It's it's healthy yeah. in helping others, and yeah. I just I don't know. I don't like being the center of attention, but I like to help people and get them yeah. to move forward. But the podcasting stuff I've in, in, enjoyed. I, that was unexpected to get down this. I'm like, oh, I'm never going to do that. And then I'm in my fourth year now, right? So, <laughs> well, I think about all the. I've just listened to you know a few since we've gotten to know each other, um, and I the interesting people that you meet. The stories that you follow, come to me, which is interesting. You, you would have never heard some of those. Uh, and and anyway, it's just, uh, you know, and the connections that you make. So, right. Well, right. Can you let the listeners know where the best way is to connect with you or to reach out if they're interested in learning more? Sure. Um, I have a website. It's uh, you put the words all together, inspire to seek dot com. And so that's T.O as in not, not the number two, but inspire to seek.com. And I'll just a heads up as this goes out, we're in the midst of, uh, of revitalizing it with a new book coming out uh, to reflect that uh, book sale in there. Uh, also through my personal email, uh, perigee, P-E-R-I-G-E-E 31 at gmail.com. Perigee 31 at gmail.com. And here's, uh, I've, I told uh, Bridget ahead of time, I love to share uh, inspiration with people. And so I have literally some five by seven physical cards with inspirational thoughts and some of the beautiful scenes from the Pacific Crest Trail, as well as uh, a digital version I can send you. Uh, if you'll send me an email, I'll get that to you that you can use as a screensaver or however you choose to use it. Um, I'm not worried about somebody stealing the rights to this. I just <laughs> want to share inspiration and motivation uh, not to hike the trip but to step out uh, in your own journey. Right. Go in the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And for those that are listening, I will have the actual links in the description section, just in case if you, if you're listening, you could be driving, right? You can come back later and look. And Perry, this has been wonderful. And I thank you so much for your time. And I'm so glad we connected through Kent. Uh, thank you very much. It's been right, a, joy. Have a great, great day, everybody. <laughs>